Hi, welcome back to part two of the Verdict Halloween special. On today's special episode, we'll be looking at some of our favorite Halloween movies from when we were growing up. Stay tuned. My name is Monique, and today I'm joined by my co-host. I'm Jasmine. And I'm Clark. So, for my movie, today I chose to talk about Tim Burton's Beetlejuice from 1988. It stars Michael Keaton, Winona Ryder, and Alec Baldwin. Let's watch the trailer. They were happy to haunt in peace. Until the new residents moved in. To rid themselves of these pesky pests, they call on the ghost world's leading bio-exorcist. <laughs> it's showtime. Attention, Kmart shoppers. I'm back. You want somebody out of the house, I want to get somebody out here. <laughs> but I want out. For good. Let's talk about Beetlejuice. So, this movie... It, it's nostalgic to me. I remember growing up, watching it. Uh, it scared me like nobody's business. Uh, be, I'm a scary person, so scary movies like Beetlejuice, it may not be scary to some, but for me, it was scary. Um, Michael Keaton, something about him playing Beetlejuice, uh, he just fit the role so well. Uh, what do you guys think? Yes, I thought that Michael Keaton, his performance, it really blew me away because I've never seen him play a role like that, honestly. Yeah. Um, it was I, more funny than scary to me, though. I agree. He did really well, but I thought it was more comedic and less horror, I guess. Ah, uh, see. I, I felt like, uh, so I don't generally do scary movies. Mm -hmm. So especially when growing up, I just, I, yeah, I, I, I'm a big scary cat. So for this, this is about as scary as it could get for me, for <laughs> Beetlejuice. Uh, Winona Ryder, I mean, this. she was in her prime at this time, and I think she did a great job. She added that spooky, like, I wouldn't say emo feel to it, mm -hmm. but she definitely, she definitely uh, played the role really well, and I loved how she always teeter-tottered on the, like, I really just don't care. Like, I don't yeah. care if you're Beetlejuice or not. It's whatever. <laughs> so. I agree. I really liked her character, and I like how she portrayed her character, the costuming, everything was just perfect in my opinion for her. Yeah, um, so with the announcement of a Beetlejuice sequel coming up next year mm -hmm. with the returning cast, what, what, do you guys, what do you guys think is gonna come from that? Do you guys think it's gonna be a successful um, uh, sequel or do you think it's gonna be a flop? I mean, like you said, it's a classic. It's got it's got the audience for it, and I mean, it's Tim Burton. You know, that's a that's a name everyone wants to see, mm -hmm. and especially with the revival of, you know, some of these actors like Winona Ryder off the success of Stranger Things. You know, yep. that's going to definitely fill some seats. So I feel like with Tim Burton, he did a really great job. Uh, just him and you know directing these films and producing these films, all of his films, he has submerged himself into his film, even though he's not in it. Mm -hmm. um, from Beetlejuice to uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas, mm -hmm. uh, uh, The Corpse Bride, movies like that. I mean, he gives that scary feel. I mean, it, it, would, be, it would be crazy not to watch a Tim Burton f film during Halloween, uh, the Halloween season, because he, it's, it's just what he is. He, he makes yeah. scary movie or, you know, kid-friendly scary movies. And mm -hmm. uh, I really, I really like how he puts his films out. I agree, his style is very unique and I think that alone will fill the seats, like Clark said. Even if it's not as good as the original, people will still wanna watch it just to see where yeah. he goes with it. And there's a huge Tim Burton following, you know, mm -hmm. there, I mean, oh, yeah. you think about The Nightmare Before Christmas, Beetlejuice, mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, people, there's all kinds of merch, there's all kinds of stuff, costumes, you know, so I, I like I said, I think, or like you said, I think it will fill the seats. Um, do I think it's going to be as great as the first one? Probably not, because mm -hmm. I am very nostalgic in that sense. Some people like sequels. I'm just not a big fan. But we'll see. I'm excited to see what uh, what he does with the film and um, to see all, all recurring actors and actresses. 
So uh, I think Winona, Winona Ryder has a uh, a host of um, abilities when it comes to acting, and she plays different roles. Mm-hmm. And, but I think she was really made for this Beetlejuice role. So I yeah. agree. She's a great actress in general, but I feel like she did so well in that role. And I'm excited to see her. Um, I'm also excited to hear, I heard that Jenna Ortega is going to have a role in the movie really? as well. So that'll be a new person. And I think she's also very talented. So I'm excited about that. I'm super, I'm super pumped for it now. I'm going to have mm-hmm. to go and watch it. Um, and then, of course, Michael Keaton. Mm-hmm. You cannot go wrong with Michael Keaton. He's Batman, right? He is Batman. He is Batman. Also so, directed by Tim Burton. Yes. So, I mean, I'm Batman, you know, it's <laughs> Michael Keaton. So you can't go wrong with that. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty pumped up to see it. I enjoyed the movie. Um, so on a scale from one to 10, because it is our Halloween uh, season, Mm -hmm. what are we going to rate this on a scary stick scale? One to 10. I'm going to have to give it a round of five. You know, this was my first time watching it. You know, I'm more grown up, you know, as a child, it probably would have gotten me more the Michael Keaton as a big, scary snake. But I thought, like I said, it's just more funny than anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, I'd probably rate it more like a, a three. <gasps> whoa, I, whoa. In terms of scare factor. In terms scare, of scare factor? Scare factor. Okay, yeah, scare because factor. Because I just, I personally thought it was really funny. I didn't think it was more so scary. Well, I would have to rate it scare factor. I would have to rate it. I would probably have to, as a child, I would have definitely rated it mm-hmm. like an eight or nine. Mm-hmm. As an adult watching it, I would rate it probably... Probably a five or six, mm-hmm. um, you know, something about saying Beetlejuice three times still yeah. kind of freaks me out. So Understandable. I definitely think when you watch it does make a big difference. Yes. Yes. I watched it as an adult, not as a kid. I do have a son and I watched it with him recently just mm-hmm. to, you know, follow up. It's been a while. Yeah. And uh, he's nine and uh, he was not impressed at all. He was like, this movie is not scary at all. And I was like, well, you know. <laughs> It is what it is. If anybody asks, my son RJ rated it a three also. So oh, wow. there you go. Yes. <laughs> but anyways, so that is Beetlejuice. Next, we have Jasmine. Mm-hmm. The movie I will be discussing is Coraline. This movie came out in 2009, and it was directed by Henry Selick. It stars Dakota Fanning, Jennifer Saunders, and Ian McShane. Let's watch the trailer. Hmm. Coraline Jones always dreamed of finding a better world. Ah! A world more exciting than this. Uh But never did she imagine that she'd discover it in her own home. Coraline. It was a movie that I watched growing up, and I personally found it really scary, especially for a kid's movie. I feel like it has a lot of depth to it. What did you guys think about the movie? I thought it was a great watch. It was very visually pleasing. Mm -hmm. Um, The animation has aged tremendously over the past almost 15 years. Yeah. Like a studios. I mean, they always make great work. Um, I think this film was actually very revolutionary in terms of the animation. I know that they did a lot of like 3D printing for like the faces of the characters mm. instead of like actually going in with computers, which I thought was very interesting. And I, def- I definitely think it paid off. Yeah, that's really cool. What did you think about it? So outside of the technical things that uh, mm-hmm. Clark talked about, I mean, overall, the, uh, this movie came out. Um, I I was you know well into my teenage years, mm-hmm. and I. It was scary. <laughs> yeah. This movie was scary. I mean, it had it had a lot of depth, like you said, mm-hmm. uh, compared to like um, Beetlejuice or, you know, a movie uh, of that sort. This movie had like, uh, there was a lot of backstory meaning to it. Mm-hmm. And every time I've watched it, it's something else just sticks out to me. And just overall, the animation of it. It, it was a little frightening for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big scaredy cat, so that was, uh, that movie freaked me out. So. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I love how you brought up Beetlejuice because 
Henry Salak, the director of Coraline, he also worked on The Nightmare Before Christmas with Tim Burton. So I definitely yes, got that yes. same kind of vibe. It, it definitely has that 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 feel to it. Mm -hmm. um, but in as far as like the the difference in animation between um, The Nightmare Before Christmas mm -hmm. and Coraline, there just seems like that doll effect that they create mm -hmm. it, it it's freaky it's it's weird it and then you got the, like the eye stitching and i mean i just i i watched it again to prepare for our show mm -hmm. and yeah it, even as an adult it, it still is kind of like eh, this is a little this is a little, little this is a lot actually <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. i i wasn't i wasn't prepared to be uh scared again as an adult so. yeah i feel that a lot so what were some of you guys big takeaways from it oh wow um, mainly it was you know be careful what you wish for i mean yeah first she was kind of wishing her family away but then she realized at the end you know mm -hmm. Yeah. They still love and care for her yeah. more than her other mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that was, and that was kind of freaky too. Like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, she, she's, she's like, um, you know, her mom doesn't want to let her go outside and play in the rain, but her new mom does. And it, we're going to have fun and it's right. all fun and games. Yeah. And it's all fun and games until it really happens. And exactly. Then you're like, and then as an adult and with children, now mm -hmm. I know like, oh yeah, kids need structure. They do yeah. <laughs> The, so I look at it in that way, but as a child watching this movie, it is kind of like an eye opener. Like, oh man, maybe I I should have been a little bit nicer to my parents. <laughs> you know, I love my mom and dad. So no, I, um, I get my kids means. watched this movie, and for them, they were they were actually they were more freaked out on this movie than they were on Beetlejuice. Yeah, Definitely. so yeah, that makes sense. It, it was it was a, overall this movie is a good movie. It has great meaning behind it. Mm -hmm. And just in all the characters, the um, the animation in it, it just was overall a great movie, I feel like. I agree. I love how you mentioned that it made you feel more gratitude towards your parents. Yes. It definitely had the same effect on me because, you know, families can be difficult sometimes and oh. parenting is not easy and you can't always just give your kid everything they want. And one of her big problems with them was, oh, she didn't like the food that they were making and the clothes that they were getting for her. But the thing is, like, they were just doing their best to provide for her. And mm -hmm. she goes to this other world and, oh my goodness, you can eat whatever you want. You can wear whatever you want. And do whatever but that you comes want. with yeah. consequences as well. Mm -hmm. And as an adult, <laughs> and it's crazy because you're looking at this movie and you're watching it as a, it's a kid's movie. But mm -hmm. as an adult, I mean, you know, now, you know, you, you can do whatever you want. You can have, have whatever you want, yeah. eat whatever you want. Go ahead, do what you want, boo. It's your world. I'm just trying to be in it but there's consequences to it. Exactly. So, uh, and honestly, that's probably more scarier as an adult <laughs> than right. as a child. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just saying, uh, you can do what you want, but there, there are consequences to what you do. So yeah. that was, that was a good meaningful, um, thing that I got out of the movie. So. I agree. There are many great themes, but that was definitely one of the biggest ones. Yeah. So, what aspect of the movie do you guys think was the scariest? Oh man, I thought it was like really unsettling when like they started to try to like force to the buttons into her eyes or like mm -hmm. say like come on, you know, join us. That, and that slow descent into her realizing that like it's mm -hmm. not everything is what it seems. That also was probably the scariest part of the movie. <laughs> so about the eyes, I mm -hmm. I just was like, "Oh no, this is not okay." <laughs> This, yeah. This is not okay. So, yeah, that probably was also the scariest part of the movie for me. So I agree. There were many moments that were unsettling, including when she's trying to escape through the tunnel and all that. Oh, but yeah. When they were, like, smiling, but there was some sort of, like, there was some sort of sinister feeling behind it, even though they were still oh. seemingly pleasant. It just, like, mm. You know, rewatching it, mm -hmm. it, it gave me... Um, uh, uh, like us vibes mm. you know the the uh yes yes from, uh, yes i yeah. agree uh what is his jordan peele Peel. yeah. yeah jordan peele it gave me like so if they were to ever make like a a remake of Coraline, i i think he would be a great <laughs> option to because he gives that freaky feel that scary like sinister feel like mm -hmm. he said in all of his films 
And uh, I think it would be cool to see what he does if he did animation. So I would definitely, I definitely watch that. Agree. Yeah. I agree. I would watch that too. Yeah, yeah. I think that'd be amazing. So, but maybe for market it towards adults and not kids. Yeah, <laughs> would yeah. probably be better. So, but yeah. How do you guys think her perspective changed versus going in there and having those experiences in the other world and then returning back? I think in the beginning of the movie, when she first moves into town, mm -hmm. it's like really rainy and mm -hmm. kind of uh, just she's very sad and cooped up in her home. But after, you know, everything's resolved and um, her parents come back, it's more it's moved into that winter season. It's more playful and, and just snow. Mm -hmm. So I think that was kind of reflective of how like her mood changed and her perspective of like life changed after going through all that. I agree. Yeah, I, I would say, uh, I mean, overall, I think that she was already on kind of like a, the minute that she went into that other realm and, you know, found her like other parent, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. I think she already was on edge, but later on during the movie, she's like realizing like, oh, hey, and, and everything else around her is changing also mm -hmm. with her perspective. A hundred percent. So uh, I I did like how they they made that feel in the film. So mm -hmm. um, overall, I think she she learned a lot earlier, or she had a feeling, mm -hmm. and then as time went on throughout the film, she really was figuring it out. I agree. I mean, your feelings shape your reality. Yes. And I definitely think we see that through her perspective. And in the beginning, when she comes to this new place and she hates it, everything's kind of dreary. And, you know, you can tell it's just it doesn't feel fun and she's not having a good time. But towards mm -hmm. the end, things feel more vibrant, even visually. Yeah. And I like that a lot. Yep. So what would you guys rate it on a scare factor? Oh, scare factor. Mm -hmm. I would have to say, oh, I would definitely give it like an eight. Mm -hmm. Eight or uh, yeah, an eight. Yeah, I would also say an eight. Like, even though I didn't really watch this movie growing up, uh, I watched it like a few years ago, and even rewatching it again, mm -hmm. it's still just so unsettling. You yeah, know, I gotta say. Yeah, I would even say it was like, like super scary. It's just the uncomfortableness that yeah. it gives you while watching the film that makes it scary. You know what I mean? Sure. I agree. So it, it, it keeps you uncomfortable enough to be mm -hmm. so into it. Yes, know? I so, agree. So, yeah, I would definitely keep it as, as an eight. <laughs> yeah, it freaked, it freaked me out when I was younger. It freaked me out now. I'm just saying this movie's scary. So. It really is. For me, I'd probably rate it a nine, which is high, but I was a kid when I watched it for the first time. And this is one of the few movies I watched growing up that genuinely gave me nightmares and I love horror movies but this like you said very unsettling and it it really sticks with you mm, yeah so I agree all right cool so we've gone over Beetlejuice we've gone over Coraline and now we're gonna head over to Clark and he's gonna tell us about his movie well the movie I'll be talking about today is um Monster House um the movie came out in 2006 and it was directed by Gil Keenan it stars Mitchell Musso, uh, Steve Buscemi, Maggie Gyllenhaal, and uh, yeah. Let's watch the trailer. Every neighborhood has a house with a secret. Awesome kite. There's something going on in that house. This is why nobody will sit next to us at lunch. You'll see. No ghosts. Her, come back, please. <laughs> Well, this movie, Monster House, was one of my absolute favorites growing up, not even just for Halloween. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was so fun, and it really scared me as a kid and probably got me into horror today. Uh, I just want to know, what do you, do you guys think about it? Yeah, I loved this movie. I also watched it growing up, and me and my brothers would watch it over and over again because it was just so amazing. I enjoyed it. It was a good movie. It had a good meaning behind it. Uh, it was scary enough. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think overall this great movie. It it just well, let's get in. Let's get into the movie. Get you want to go ahead and tell everybody a little bit more about the movie. I mean, yeah, it. I think this movie was like as funny as it was scary. That's probably mm -hmm. one of my favorite parts. The the comedy aspect to it, because mm -hmm. like 
rewatching it, 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 some of the jokes are still, they still landed. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. agree. Definitely. Um, but yeah, I, one of the things, like, like looking at this movie now that I didn't notice growing up, the, mm -hmm. the animation, it's a little rough around the edges, you know, it's almost 20 years old, yeah. but you know, it's still got a, a, a nice charm to it that makes me feel kind of nostalgic looking back at it. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to ask, you know, how did you guys think it's aged over the past 20 or so years? So rewatching it, um, you can tell that, you know, it is an older animation mm -hmm. film. I mean, it is what it is. And it's been about 20 years, but I still think it holds, it, it holds its weight in, in animation. I think it's a, it's great. I mean, you're talking about a big old monster house, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. you know, and the way that they make it feel, um, it, I think overall, I think it's, it's held on very well. I agree. I also think it's aged very well. And like you said, the humor still lands even today. And I don't know how they were able to do that back then, but it's quite amazing. Chowder, <laughs> yeah. in my opinion. My favorite. It's just so funny. Yeah. You can't help but you, every time you look at him, you laugh because he's just, he has that type of feeling to him. He's hilarious. I totally agree on that. Mm -hmm. I felt like this movie, not only was it great for kids, mm -hmm. but it was also great for adults too. And like you said, the humor in it, you know, there's some things about in the movie that I felt like as a child, you probably wouldn't have got. Yeah. But now as an adult and rewatching it, oh, okay, I get that now. So yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. Um, it's probably probably top 10 for mine uh, as far mm. as family scary movies. Yeah. I, Easily. I agree. It's one of those movies I feel like you can rewatch it over and over again. Mm -hmm. And that just makes it timeless in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Clark? Go on. I mean, yeah, it was, it was very satisfying to watch like growing up mm -hmm. and even today, like, I don't know, maybe it's, like I said, it might be that nostalgia factor, but like watching the climax as like, He's dropping the dynamite in the house, and you know they they win. It's like it's still just so like anxiety inducing. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm still like I'm reliving it as a kid. I'm like, oh man, you know, like they're really like going up against this, like almost like against the world in a way. Like mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just now I say like this movie, mm -hmm. uh, Monster House. It gave me rewatching it. It gave me like, and I know this may sound crazy, but it gave me like up vibes. Mm -hmm. As far as like animation goes, um, you know, in Up, they had, you know, he had, that old man had the house and, and, and it, it just gave me Up vibes um, on a scarier scale. I, guess, I, because I agree. And I understand why you make that correlation because with the house and everything, I mean, he lost his wife and there, it is scary and it is funny, but it's also sad. And he's yeah. holding on to her through that house and... I think that's part of why he's so protective of it. Mm -hmm. Did you find any similarities in that um, also, Clark, or no? Uh, yes, definitely. I think there was a lot of similarities in that way. And I think Nebercracker was almost, in some ways, justified in his actions. Mm -hmm. I think um, so. Because, you know, really, like, when you think about it, like, the woman he loved that, you know, everyone treated her so harshly and that's why you know they're in the position they are today and something I actually didn't pick up on that mm -hmm. I realized um, even in the first scene when the girl is riding her bike mm -hmm. through the yard and he's like get off my lawn you know do you do you want to be eaten alive or something exactly. and like you know when you first watch that you think oh he's just a scary old man trying to threaten this kid but yeah. mm -hmm. in reality he's also kind of protecting like people from the house in a way yeah I agree I picked up on that too re-watching it now and he's protecting her and protecting the house and her memory but he is also trying to protect the kids from her he does care and he comes off as scary because he wants to keep them away but he genuinely he does care about their safety as well sure see I didn't even think about that you know I see that little mm -hmm. girl and the first thing I thought when he was like yelling at her <laughs> I was like oh yeah he's mad yeah, <laughs> yeah he is a grumpy old man mm -hmm. but now that you say it like that, I mean, the the perspective of, the, from his perspective, yeah. he's like, you know, I love my wife. I love, you know, I love, you know, this this house is, you know, it can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to make sure everybody else is safe. So, you know, I, I, I like how you uh, thought of that and saw that. It, yeah. Just in the first scene, that's crazy. Yeah. Was there any other scenes that stuck out to you? 
Oh man, I mean, like I said, I love the the ending when he drops the dynamite in the mm -hmm. house, but also it's so scary when like they get trapped in the house and they realize like there's like some anatomy to like the structure with like the mm -hmm. the uvula, you know, the, oh. the mouth and like yeah. the yes, like how like they where everything gets swallowed, like it's all just like that realization when you start putting the pieces together. It's mm -hmm. like and you see like the pictures of his wife on the wall and you start questioning like you know did he do something or what happened here and yeah. then yeah yeah i agree and, and try uh, when you're watching a film and then you you make that realization that the house is like a body like an actual body you know what i mean and and then you you see it like open up and you're just like whoa hold up and i guess that's the the scary part of it um but like as an adult watching it i could see how that um, like you, you can make that realization a little bit quicker than if you were a child. Definitely. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed this movie. I would watch it again and again. Like it, it's a classic. It's it a classic. Is. Totally. Um, Halloween, uh, spooky season mm -hmm. watch. And yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, Clark, do you have any other, um, add-ons to your movie? I mean, really, watching both of these movies, um, I've noticed some similarities in the themes with, like, for example, off the top of my head, you know, the parents didn't necessarily believe the child who was claiming mm -hmm. these crazy things were happening. Oh, um, yeah. But I just want to ask you all, did you guys think there were any similarities between the two films? So, now that you mentioned it, mm -hmm. so between Beetlejuice... Coraline mm -hmm. and Monster House. Exactly. It's always the parents who are like, no, this definitely cannot be a, a real yeah. thing. You know, with like Beetlejuice, you know, uh, uh, Winona Ryder's character is like, oh, you know, I, there's dead people upstairs. And they're like, okay. So yeah. I, I don't know, you know. And then with uh, Coraline's, mm -hmm. you know, her parents were like, you know, it's whatever, you know. And then same with the Monster House, they didn't want to believe. And I see that as a recurring thing, especially with um, uh, children's scary movies. You know, mm -hmm. it just adds to it. So, I yeah. agree. I hate the message that that sends. Like, if you come to your parents and tell them something strange is going on, they're not going to believe you. And but I understand because it leads to the kids kind of taking matters into their own hands. And it really is their story. So I get it. But yeah, I, I think that's a... a a great um, kind of overall theme between all three of our movies mm -hmm. is it the parents do have similarities in this. So we're going to go ahead and close out. But before mm -hmm. we do, we're going to go ahead and rate these movies. Ooh. All right. So Beetlejuice. Let's start off with Beetlejuice. What would you rate it? So we've already done the scary factor. Oh, wait. Did oh, you do not scary? For uh, not for Monster House, no. I mean, I would give that one like also like an eight or nine just because, you know, growing up, like I still have that fear in me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would give it an eight for sure. I would give Monster House an eight also. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I feel pretty solid about Monster House. It gives it gives that scary feel um, e I, even as an adult. So, yes, I'd rate it an eight. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go ahead and rate it overall. So, uh, let's start with you, Clark. Uh, Monster House, let's rate it. I mean. One to ten. I'm very biased, but I just have to say, it. in my eyes, it's still a perfect ten. You know, even looking through the, the, the animation, it's just... Across the board, can't go wrong. Every year, it's a it's an essential watch. Jasmine, I honestly, I really do agree. Um, overall, I would rate it a perfect ten, because it's not just the horror, but it also balances it with comedy, and it does it so well. And mm -hmm. even twenty years later, it's just so enjoyable. You know what? I think this is the first time we've ever had this on this show this season. I'm gonna also rate it a ten. Oh wow! Uh, I felt like the meaning was great in it. Um, I, the comedy was good, mm -hmm. but the scary feel was also great. So 10 across the board for Monster House. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's awesome. Now let's go ahead and rate your movie, Coraline. What would you um, rate it overall? For Coraline overall, I think I'd rate it like an eight. Okay. It was really good. Um, it's not something that I feel like I can just put on any time. I have to be in a certain mood to watch it, I feel like, because it is so scary. Clark? I'd also give it like an eight, you know, it gets more enjoyable every time uh, you watch it and it's got some good values, but overall, I'd say it's a solid eight. Mm -hmm. All right, and I would definitely rate it about a seven, mm -hmm. just because it was scary to me. 
So, and then with ending out with Beetlejuice, definitely 10 across the board. I'm nostalgic in that sense. What about you guys? I'd say it's a, a, a solid seven. You know, I, mm -hmm. I had a great time watching it. I watched it twice, so that's got to say something, okay. you know? Jasmine? Very true. I would also rate it a seven. I think it is very funny, and I like how they went about everything. The characters were enjoyable, and okay. it was really good. All right. Well, we've rated them all. Thanks again for joining us for the second part of the Verdict Halloween special. Make sure to check, a, check out our final part next week where we'll be discussing the new age of horror mm -hmm. and look at some recent horror films. Thank you, guys.